I paid 15 cents to buy shares of Coinbase nine years ago. Here's Wall Street Journal reporter Rolf Winkler's tweet on the day of the IPO. We were the earliest venture capitalists in that company with shares that topped out on IPO day at 420 bucks. Each VC on this list earned huge returns that most regular investors can never get. But you'll notice we were first, way before it was obvious. Have you ever wanted to know exactly how a venture capital fund actually works? You're in the right place because today you're gonna learn. Plus, I have a huge announcement to make. Initialized, my VC firm that I created is hiring. What better way to learn than by jumping all the way in? You don't have to have experience investing, but it can help. And you don't need money already either. What makes a good VC? And are you a good fit to be an investor working with us at Initialized? Watch this video and you'll find out. And for some of you watching, you might just get to join us. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the number one reason why a VC firm exists, to generate returns for our investors. When we invest, it's not my money. It's the money of who we call our limited partners. They're endowments, nonprofits, retirement plans, and sovereign wealth funds that professionally manage money. Most of the world's money is actually controlled by these organizations. And when we invest, we do it because we intend on returning a lot more money to those investors, far more than what they gave us. And I have good news, we've been doing it. We get paid to invest in the best possible founders. This started really in the 60s and 70s. Here's Don Valentine, founder of Sequoia Capital, who started with an $8 million fund in 1972. I'm not interested in entrepreneurs who will do it our way. I'm not interested in entrepreneurs who think there's a dress code. I'm interested in entrepreneurs who have a vision of doing something consequential, preferably that becomes big. Don is one of the absolute legends of venture capital. Sequoia, the venture firm he created, has now funded companies that represent more than $3.3 trillion. That's trillion with a T. To put it in perspective, all of the NASDAQ has a market cap of about 10 trillion. Y Combinator, where I worked at, has created about $400 billion worth of wealth. Founded by Paul Graham and Jessica Livingston in 2005, 15 years ago. They gave me my start. I started Initialized in 2012 with a first fund of just $7 million. Today, we're involved in over $100 billion worth of market cap in less than nine years. Like I said at the top of this video, we just had our first mega win. We just returned hundreds of millions of dollars to our initial investors on the IPO day of Coinbase. I made a YouTube video about that Link below if you want to learn more. If you missed that, now's a good time to check that out and come back. Not only that, we're the very first investors in almost a dozen startups now worth over a billion dollars. Instacart in grocery delivery, Flexport in logistics, Patreon in creator payments, Row and Truepill in pharma, Standard Cognition in autonomous checkout, Cruise Automation in autonomous cars, Open Door in real estate, Blend in mortgages, and many more. We have dozens more in the wings, growing quickly with real product market fit. And we're just getting started. When you're thinking about a career in venture capital or even deciding which VC fund to take money from, whether or not that VC fund is a winner matters a lot. Look, I'm not saying this is a good thing. It's just how it works. Just as getting a degree from Harvard, Stanford, or Oxford will help you in your career, a startup funded by a top VC firm will do better. It'll be able to hire smarter and better people, raise more money from better next stage investors, and with those things, build a better product that wins in the marketplace. So what does that mean? It means VC itself is winner take all, and you'd better pick wisely. Getting the right investor early can be a pivotal moment in a startup's history, and you can be part of it. Always remember though, being the best, most well-known brand in VC might be the sizzle but the stake is in the returns. If you wanna build the future, you've got to believe that you can do it. 
We live in a crazy cynical world these days and being a cynic just doesn't work for venture capital. We fund ideas when they're still not obvious and they often seem crazy to the public. Mark Andreessen talks about this moment in the 1990s when VC and tech startups were sort of at the height of a form of cynical madness, when any buzzword filled startup with the right MBAs was going to IPO. At the height of the bubble in 98, 99, the products that were getting built for the most part weren't very good. And these companies were kind of on this bomb run to get public as fast as possible. And you had all these catchphrases uh, like go big or go home. Um, or my other favorite one at the time, which was forget details, just do deals. Um, and so you had this really kind of mercenary hit and run approach to building companies. And then all those companies vaporized after the crash because it turned out they didn't have valuable products. They didn't have deep engineering capability. And then all the engineers who worked for those companies hated working for those companies because they were completely sales driven, sales led, these kind of mercenary kind of exercises at the, at the height of, of, of how bad it got. Now things have clearly swung way over to the other end. And I actually think that's a fantastic thing. These days it's less about money or bluster or getting rich quick. Now you have to come through with the realness. At Initialized, we have a strong preference for technical product and design-oriented founders because those are the builders who have actually changed the world. The ones who can build it usually do. Here's a Porva Mehta from Instacart talking about his earliest days trying to get funding from Y Combinator while I was there. So I decided that I wanted to go to Y Combinator, but there was one slight problem. The application deadline had passed two months ago, but somehow, I knew that if the, if the YC partners experienced Instacart, they would have to let me in. So I contacted all the, the YC alumni that I had in my network for introductions to the partners. And in the next 24 hours, I started to get those introductions. Now, all I had to do was wait. One by one, all the responses started to come in and, and the answers were always the same. No way, it's too late. And then finally, I got Gary Tan's response. And this gave me some hope. He said, you could fill out a late application, but it's nearly impossible now. So that meant it was possible. <laughs> I, I realized that at this point, none of the YC partners had actually experienced the product. Did they even know what it was? Did they even know how it was different? So I, I knew I had to make one last attempt. I opened my app, placed an order for a six pack of beer, and addressed it to Gary Tan at the YC headquarters. One of my drivers, John, made the delivery and texted me to let me know it was done. And uh, half an hour later, I got a call from Gary Tan. I'm not sure if it was the beer talking, but he asked me to come to the, to the YC headquarters the next day to meet the partners. Instacart is now a company worth tens of billions of dollars. When that six pack of beer hit my desk and I downloaded the Instacart app, I knew we had to fund it. And that's a really fun part of this job. It didn't matter in that moment that there were dozens of other startups that had tried to do this and failed, like Webvan. It only mattered that this founder had created something truly great. And because I was an engineer and designer, I could tell. That's something we've learned from YC. YC has always prided itself on bringing on investing partners who have deep product or technical backgrounds. And it's something that we look for in our future investors who could work at Initialized. And as you can tell from this video, Apoorva wouldn't take no for an answer. That drive and never give up attitude is really powerful because if you've got it, you can recognize it in other founders. It all boils down to belief. If you have a builder who can make you believe, then they can make everyone believe. And that's how you can build something truly great. That's something we use absolutely all the time. Are you a builder and do you have those skills? And do you have the belief that tech can change the world fundamentally for the good? Then you're on the right track to being a great VC and maybe working at Initialized. Many of the truly giant outcomes in startups are both contrarian and right. In the last act, we talked about at least one form of contrarianism. In a world full of cynics with the wrong belief, it is the person with deeper, real belief who we're looking for. Here's legendary investor Peter Thiel talking about belief as a basis for contrarianism. There are almost no bubbles left because people don't believe in anything anymore. And so, um, and so to be contrarian in a world where people don't believe in anything um, is to actually think about things, to have well-defined beliefs, um, and to anchor that. So, um, so I think the way to be contrarian is to think for yourself. This kind of thinking is particularly important because investors and founders need to pick good ideas. 
Not all ideas are good. And in fact, most of them are paint by numbers. Kind of like how bad Hollywood movies get greenlit. There's sort of a Hollywood version of this where uh, the way movies always get pitched is, you know, okay, it's like a college football star, you know, uh, joins an elite group of hackers to, um, to catch the shark that killed his friend. Now that is a movie that has not yet been made. <laughs> but the question is, is, is that the right category or is the correct category, it's just another movie, in which case, you know, there are lots of those. It's super competitive, incredibly hard to make money. No one ever makes money in Hollywood uh, doing movies. Or it's really, really hard. And so you always have this question about, does the intersection, does, is it real? Does it make sense? Does it have value that one should ask? And of course, there are startup versions of this where you, and the, the sort of the ba really bad versions, you just take a whole series of uh, buzzwords, sharing mobile social apps, you combine them, and you have some kind of uh, narrative. And whether or not that's a real business or not, it's generally a bad sign. So it's, it's almost this pattern recognition. When you have this re rhetoric of this sort of intersections, it, it, it generally does not work. The something of somewhere is really mostly just the nothing of nowhere. And it's like the Stanford of North Dakota. Uh, one of a kind, but it's not Stanford. We're looking for people who are independent thinkers, who think from first principles. And if you're that kind of person, you're going to see paint by numbers right away. That Hollywood style startup idea does sometimes work, but founders pursue it at a far larger rate and it produces way more failure. Thiel's philosophical basis for this phenomenon is actually from René Girard and his idea of mimesis, that our desires, the things that we want as people, come from other people. The result? Well, Peter says, thinking about how disturbingly herd-like people become in so many different contexts, mimetic theory forces you to think about that, which is knowledge that's generally suppressed and hidden. As an investor entrepreneur, I've always tried to be contrarian to go against the crowd to identify opportunities in places where people are not looking. That's why being a contrarian, going against the herd, and then being right is one of the major key and frankly fun ways to do this business. Every so often someone comes in and teaches you some kind of secret knowledge. And the best way to figure out if someone sitting across from you has secret knowledge at all is to ask them, what do you believe that nobody else believes? That's how you see value where the vast majority of others, you know, the paint by numbers people, the get rich quick people, the scammers, the do nothings, those people don't. This is how we win. Finally, and what's most important for us, can you be a benevolent investor? This means three things, being fair, direct, and honest. While these things shouldn't be unusual traits for venture capitalists, an outsider would probably be surprised by the kind of behavior you run across in the realms of high finance. But if you're an insider, you know exactly what I mean. I know this part of the video might get me in trouble someday because we're not perfect people by any means but I want you to know it's my direct intention to build a venture firm that wins without playing the games that are commonplace in venture capital and business culture broadly like this. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. I'm glad to say that you don't have to be that way to get ahead. In fact, what we've learned is kind of the opposite. The best founders can choose anyone and they will choose those who are most trustworthy first. Being a bad actor is adverse selection in an iterative, infinite game like venture capital. You might win in this deal, but you're gonna lose in the long run. And this is the longest run game there is. Venture capital structures last for 10 to 14 years and these days longer and longer because that's how long it takes to go from an idea all the way to an IPO. How we do the work matters. I think of Bill Walsh in his book, The Score Takes Care of Itself. He says, I directed our focus less to the prize of victory than to the process of improving. Obsessing perhaps about the quality of our execution and the content of our thinking. That is our actions and our attitude. I knew that if I did that, winning would take care of itself. That's what I believe too. Do right and you'll win. Initialized has the luxury of doing this because we've consistently had great funds. My friend Jason Lemkin tweeted this and it really reminded me of that luxury. 
With a 1x net GP, a write-off is high drama. In a 2x net fund, every write-off hurts, but in a 4x plus net fund, write-offs don't matter. We are that third kind of fund. Five core funds, $770 million in committed assets later, we're doing great. And that's why we can be better partners to founders consistently. I see this over and over again with other co-investors. I won't name names because bad days happen to everyone. The ones that cause the biggest problems are the ones that are actually doing the most poorly. Just as squeezing harder on a handful of sand will force more grains out, squeezing founders when there are problems will ensure startup failure. And here's how it happens. First, the team misses revenue targets for a quarter. Second, the investor starts micromanaging the founder. But then third, the founder spends more time giving reports to the board than actually fixing the problem. The result, the startup never recovers and dies. Greed and insecurity actually begets failure at that step three. Instead of making founders feel like employees, the right thing to do is help identify the root cause. Sometimes the roles and responsibilities of their executives, sometimes it's the business model, the go-to-market, sometimes it's the product. Whatever it is, you can only help if you first do no harm. Being benevolent and helpful can drive better decisions and better results. If you solve the root cause with high integrity, you can get the company to a better state. I find this absolutely all the time. And if I had to point to why I think Initialize will win, it's this, being fair, direct, and honest above all. We don't compromise when it comes to how to treat people, each other, and the founders we work with. This is how we really win. So that brings me to the big announce. Initialized, we're hiring. Most VC firms won't do an open search like this, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna get to know some amazing people this way. We believe deeply in the value of diversity, both in terms of experiences and background. And that's important because the more diverse our team is, the better our decisions will be and the more we can bring about the world we all want to live in. There's two roles we're hiring for. One is a principal, which means you don't have to have investing experience. You might be a founder or an executive. We want someone who can really help startups go from zero to one. We think of this principal role as the place where you'll mainly help founders, but this is also a place where we're going to teach you how to make investments. It's okay if you haven't done it yet. We're also hiring a partner. This is more ideal for people who actually have some investing experience and a successful track record. You might be an angel investor, or you might be a partner or principal at another venture firm. Across all of these roles, you don't need to be from a particular school. You don't have to have worked at Google or Facebook. We don't care about that kind of background as much. We care about your experiences. What can you do? And keep in mind, these are pretty senior positions. Whether it's the head of a startup that's working as an early employee or an executive coming up, or as an investor working at a great venture firm already, even an angel investor working on your own. Why do we need so much experience? Because that's what founders really need. Jay-Z once rapped, everybody wanna tell you how to do it, but they never did it. The link is in the description. And if you have friends you think would be great for Initialized, please pass this video on. The world's so full of capital and most finance people say there's too much money chasing too few good ideas and too few good teams. That's just wrong to me. You know, I agree there's infinite money, but there's an infinite number of problems to solve. And if my YouTube channel has taught me one thing, it's that there are an infinite number of really smart, good people out there to solve those problems. That's what Initialized is built to do. So that's it. I hope you learned a thing or two about what makes a good VC, what we're looking for, and I hope I get a chance to work with you at Initialized. If you made it this far, don't forget to click subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll see every single video we post here. You can count on something every week that I think will help you build a business, be a better leader, be a better manager, and yes, maybe build a billion dollar startup. I'll see you next week.